Hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are celebrating a momentous occasion today. And that is football season around the corner. No, today's not a holiday, but the holiday is approaching so we can start celebrating. And by celebrating, I mean I can start talking about it again. Um, and if you're new to these kind of videos, um, first of all, welcome. Second of all, uh, it's mostly going to be my voice. Um, there's going to be the occasional um, trigger. I have five here in front of me. And that's because I have a rating system that I do for these. Uh, what this is is a season prediction video. Um, during the season, I will do a regular, like a, like a um, weekly predictions. Um, uh, I can't find that little paper I had that had it. All right, not important. Um, that just had my old record from the last season, which I did predict game is fairly okay. I think I had like, it was like a two to three odds of getting a game right. So every like third game, I'll get one wrong. Um, this is just five triggers. This is a one and this is two. This is three, the one you'll be hearing the most of. This is four. And then this is five. Now I'm gonna turn the volume up actually just a little bit so you can hear the triggers a little better. That's down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's try that again. This is five. This is four. This is the most common. Three. Two. And one. All right. Today we are doing, as you can see, the AFC South. That's the first division we are doing. Um, then I'm going to go through each of the games for each team, and I'm going to uh, give it both a win or loss, as well as uh, a number rating, which it will correspond with the trigger below that I will be making noise with. Last year we went into this, um, the videos were about like 40-ish minutes long, and I'm not trying to do that this time, I'm trying to make it a little bit more faster. Uh, so I'm going to talk a tiny bit faster and a tiny bit less, um, but I'm also going to be doing a little bit less sounds, but I'm going to try and keep the sound going the entirety of the video, you know, you know, you know, so you'll, you'll figure it out. Either way, um, if you're more for like the personal attention that I do, uh, like role plays, this is not that. I have, uh, plenty of other videos for you. I, please, please fall down the rabbit hole, um, but... If you like the sound of my voice, and like football, or one or, or just one of those a lot, then you're in the right spot. So, without further ado, uh, we're going to start with the Titans. The Titans, I think, are the favorite to win the division this year. Um, personally, I think they got a little bit worse. Uh, their secondary got better, I think. I think I think Jackrabbit, Jenkins, Janoris Jenkins, um, retired. I think he was still with them. He might have been... A giant? I can't quite remember. Um, but they had Caleb Farley. He should be healthy now. He would have been a higher draft pick if he was, um, excuse me, healthy when they drafted him. They still have interior pressure. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons. And, of course, Kevin Byard's there. So they're a defensive heavy team. They're a very excellent pass rushing team. Uh, but offensively, they just traded away their number one receiver. Right now, their number one receiver is... What is, this, what is his name? Oh, I can't remember what his name is. Oh, I can't remember what his name is. I think it's, like some, it's Hyphen Washington. Not a remarkable player. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I don't know that much of his game, but I know he shouldn't be treated as the number one. Um... So they're going to be kind of lacking in the passing department. Thankfully, they have arguably the best running back in the league, or at least best pure running back in the league, which I don't think he's either of those, but a lot of people do. Uh, and Derrick Henry, um, he was injured last year, but he's back, so they're probably going to just feed him the rock again until he dies. Uh, hopefully he doesn't do it this year. Um, so that's basically their team. They should be good. Um... 
but I feel like last year being the AFC South kind of bloated their their um their uh record um a little bit. That's why they got the number one seed because they, they didn't really play like a number one seed in my opinion. Like sure they sat, they sacked Joe Burrow nine times, but they still lost. Like, but I digress. Week one, Giants. We're gonna start off with a number we don't see very often. That's a five. And it's five, uh, five is a win. There will be very rare cases where I give a four and it's not a win. There will be very rare cases where I give a two and it's not an L. Um, basically. I don't think the Giants are that good of a football team. Uh, I think Daniel Jones um, is streaky, and when he's on, he's very good. But when he's off, he's equally as bad. Um, I kind of have faith in Saquon. Uh, I have faith in their left side of their offensive line now. Um, Evan Neal, for some reason, looks like a work in progress, uh, which is not what I expected. But then again, it's still preseason, so we have to wait till the actual regular season starts and real games, you know, start proceeding. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau has looked good so far. Uh, but it's the first year under that new new coaching, and it's already kind of seeming a little bit rocky. And I don't think the Giants are a team that you can get, you can just flip a switch in a year. I feel like they're going to have a, the adjustment period, and that adjustment period is probably going to be this year. Is it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for them to have a bad year because I mean what's the worst that happens they get a top three draft top to top three top five draft pick and they end up with a quarterback because if they get in there Daniel Jones probably isn't good enough to be their starter um so they probably draft a guy but I'm not here to talk about the Giants I'm here I, I just was here to explain why the Giants are that easy of a win um so. A five on the win scale for the Titans against the Giants, starting off one and zero, and then they move on to potentially the hardest game of the whole year, and that's the Bills. It's at Buffalo too. Uh, thankfully, it's not um, late in late in the year, so it's not super cold. Uh, even though Derrick Henry seems to do well in those games, um, Tennessee is naturally a warm area. I have them taking the loss to the Bills because the Bills are a lot of people's favorite to win the Super Bowl. I don't necessarily like want to schedule them in there. I haven't gotten that far in my predictions. Um, I'm gonna wait how the whole like seeding and everything goes out once I finish this, and I can go about that. Um, they're definitely a threat. Absolutely, they're absolutely with Josh with Josh Allen there and Stephon Diggs. Like you fill in the rest, especially with that defense. It's just they're they're there. Um, and I think that's gonna, that, that that duo is going to be enough to overcome the Titans. Uh, probably, again, excellent defense. I don't know if they're going to be as stellar in the pass rush as they've been in the past, but they're going to be a good defense, as, as always, and they're able. Uh, so that's their first loss of the season, but I, I give it a three. I give it a three. I give it a three, which basically is a toss-up, which means, like, the... Yeah, I think they could win the game. That's what I'm saying. Like, the three means like they, they could win the game, and I wouldn't be necessarily shocked. Um, it's a toss-up. A toss-up against one of the best teams in the league is, is, is respectable to open to start the year off. So they are 1-1 one and one in my predictions. And now, I love how I said um, I want to make this video shorter, and I'm at almost 10 minutes. Uh, alrighty, so we're on to the Raiders, and the Raiders are going to be another three. I don't expect that much um, growth from the Raiders. I liked the, their head coach in Bisaccia because um, he got them to the playoffs. He was a special teams guy. He's, he seemed the players seem to rally behind him, and then they just go like, "Oh, let's get the guy who can't commit to a head coaching job somewhere else." And Mike McDaniel's and who failed the first time. Sure, he might work out this time, but he's already failed. Like when they had a guy who's succeeding, they went out and upgraded in the pass rush and the receiving department. They look like a dangerous team, though, but I don't know if they're going to be put it all together and mesh in the first year. So I have that as a win for the Titans. So the Titans are 2-1. and one. Moving on to uh, week four. Oh, by the way, I don't necessarily have everybody's bye weeks down. Whoopsies. Um, 
so week four or the fourth game of the schedule schedule is at the Colts. Um, it should be a three. It should be a three, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be a three. It's going to be a two. It's going to be a two because I. I think the Colts are going to be a really good team at home. It's just that's, I think the defense is going to be better. Um, uh, so that's a two for them uh, and a loss. Moving on to next week is uh, at the Commanders, which is a four and W. I think the matchup is just really good there. Pressure Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz folds. They're going to have a fine job doing that, and I feel like uh, their offense should score enough. That probably won't be too much, but uh, Derrick Henry should be able to pilot them through that Washington front, even even though it is a stellar front four. Moving back on to week, week, the week I think it's week six, might be week five. No, it's week six, might, might be week seven, regardless. I'm going to stop saying that. The sixth game schedule, um, the Colts, but it's at home against the Colts. Uh, this one I have as a three and a W. I almost gave it a four to like offset the other thing, but I feel like it's, that's accurate. I feel like that's how the, the relationship is there a little bit. I feel like the Titans are probably going to lose in, in, in Indianapolis, but I feel like they might win at home, but they also might lose at home. But I don't think they're going to get swept, so I give them a W, but it's also a three. So here the Titans are four and two. The next game is at the Texans, and a lot of people write this game off as an easy win. I don't think the Texans are that bad. I think uh, you'll see uh, that my schedule later. You'll see how I predict their schedule, but I don't think they're a bad team, and I um, and I think they're going to be competitive. So I give this one a three and a loss. So I think the, t the Texans win the game against the Titans. So the Titans experience a loss, which is four and three now. Then they're at the, at the Chiefs. Uh, I gave it a two. I don't really need to elaborate on why because Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to be good. Like they're going to have an electric offense. Offense is going to work somehow. It's just going to it's just it's, it's going to work. Even if it's going to struggle in certain areas, it's going it's going to work. The defense should be good enough. To Keep teams at bay, especially teams that don't really have like a high fl high flying offense to keep up with Mahomes, because they're gonna break some point. So, like the defense will break at some point against the Chiefs. It's just how it works. So I gave it a two. I gave it a two. One of the few moments that they get a two this year. Um, it's also a loss, as you can guess. Uh, the next game is against the Broncos. Uh, that's a three. They're at home against the Broncos, so you know. New kind of regime there, and and, uh, and Denver as well. But I feel like I don't know if this is actually facts, but I feel like there's less turnover there to, than there is at um Den that uh oh, wow Las Vegas, other than you quarterback. Um, but sorry, I got distracted. That's a loss against Denver. I have faith in Denver. I don't think they're going to necessarily be like the contenders for the for a Super Bowl immediately, but I feel like they're going to be a good team. Um, I have this game as a loss, as but it's a three though, so it's a toss up. Uh, the next game is actually at the Packers. Um, that's another two. It's the last two of the year for the Titans actually. Um, so I think they're going to lose that one. I think the Packers are going to have a good defense, and I think the Packers are going to have an excellent run game. And I think that the Titans are used to controlling the tempo, and they're not used to, and they won't be as good at stopping the tempo being controlled against them a little bit in this regard. You know what I mean? Because uh, the Packers are going to be able to do it back to them. So it's two and a loss. Uh, moving on to the Bengals, um, which could honestly be a better team than the Packers. But since the Titans are at home and they have a better matchup against them and experience, I give this one a three and a W. Um, which, you know, that's just how the NFL works. Matchups and honestly luck, but I'm going to pretend I'm smart and, and can predict things that are almost impossible. Um, 
because I'm inevitably, I'm inevitably going to be wrong on a lot of these. Um, moving on to the Eagles. It's at the Eagles, and that's a 3 and a W for the Titans. I, ha I have faith in the Eagles this year. I don't want to, but I have faith in the Eagles this year. But like, <sighs> You're going to tell me. You're going to tell me. Mike Rabel is okay with trading away his best receiving threat without feeling like he knows how to beat that receiving threat. Like, if he thought that thing, this, this guy was unguardable, unstoppable, like, he's the guy, don't you think he'd be arguing to get him paid, like, the same amount of money that the rest of the guys of his group are getting paid? Instead, no, they're like, oh, we'll take the pick. We'll take the picks from him. Most teams don't want to operate like that, so I don't think I don't think that they. Well, let me say this: I think that they know how to beat AJ Brown. I think AJ Brown's stellar. He's one of my favorite players in the whole league. Um, but I feel like the Titans are gonna go out of their way to not let um, AJ Brown beat them. Specifically, Mike Rabel won't because it's he's gonna be game planning for it, like the whole year. Just because he's not gonna let AJ Brown torch him. That, that's, that's probably an ego thing for him. Um, that's why I have them beating the Eagles at Philly. Toss-up, though. So Eagles could do it. AJ Brown could do it. But, you know, like I, I just explained why. Um, next game is Jacksonville Jaguars. That's at home. Um, the Jags are, are going to be better than people think. But uh, not here. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a four. Um the Jag, uh, yeah, the matchup against the Titans is, isn't really a good one for them. It, they would have to be able to stop um, Derrick Henry. Uh, and the middle of their defense needs to thicken up to do that. Uh, their best bet would be to outscore. Well, duh. But, um... <laughs> I'm silly. Uh, to be to outscore... Um, the Titans because with high flying passing offense in hope that um, Ryan Tannehill is doesn't have the pieces to keep up with that, and that Derrick Henry isn't able to dictate the whole game. But I still have it as a four because I think Derrick Henry will be able to dictate the whole game, at least in Tennessee. Um, moving on to week fourteen or probably week fifteen, uh, the Chargers. That's right, at the Chargers, and I have that as a toss-up and a loss. I think, like I said, I th the Titans are, are a good enough team where they will be competitive. They will be competitive. But I don't think they're as good as they were last year. And that would kind of put them over the edge a little bit. And sure, you could argue they didn't have Derrick Henry for a lot of last year. But, like, I'm talking about, like, defensively. And, like, A.J. Brown, dude, you can't argue, you can't argue about, against that. Like, that's, a, that's big. Um... So at the, at the char it's a it's a three and a loss um, against the Chargers, but I think the Chargers are an excellent team. Um, moving on to week sixteen, it's it's at home against the Texans, and that's a four and a win. It's a four and a win. Um, that was a three and a win against. So it's a three and a loss against the, te the Texans earlier in the year at the Texans. So at home, obviously, oh, not obviously, but in some instances, you, in, the teams don't, at least in my skill. But in this time, that's enough of a difference between the two teams that they get a better home advantage. And also the fact that they've already lost to that team. Teams don't often get swept. That's just the thing that doesn't happen. Well, division teams don't often get swept. It just doesn't happen a whole lot, um, usually. There are special exceptions. Of course, like I like to every rule, there are exceptions. Um, but this is a four and a win for the Titans against the Texans at, uh, at home against the Texans. And then we are staying at home as the Titans, and we are uh, then the Cowboys are coming to Tennessee. That's a th that's a three and a loss. It's a three and a loss. It's a toss up. It's a toss up. Like I said, Derrick Henry could run amok. He could, but I think the Cowboys' defense is better, especially in the middle. Um, at least for run stopping wise, uh, the edges are better for pass rushing. But um, there's a Texas rivalry, and as far as I know, the Cowboys have the edge. And I usually tend to lean in favor of what history tells. So even though I think Texans are on the up uprise, the Cowboys are currently still trying to pretend they can be contenders. So it's Cowboys win, Titans lost. 
Um, I'm whoa. Pretend I didn't do that. You're gonna pretend I didn't do that. You're gonna pretend I didn't do that because I didn't do that. Hold on. Okay, good. What I just said, I will say again when the, when I when talk about the Texans. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, Texans game four, what, it's a four. I already did that. Cowboys game, it's a three and a loss because the Cowboys are contenders. Um, Titans could run amok, but they're better. Um, whoopsies, sorry. Uh, next game is, is at the Jags, and that's a three and a W to toss up. Jags, like I said, they got on an uprise, but they'd have to do like the thing, like I said last time. Um, and it's they could do it, but they probably won't. And that's the Tennessee Titans for you. <laughs> it is a nine and eight schedule, and on my scale they got 50 points. Uh, that will not be enough for the first um, uh, seed like they got last year. I can tell you that. But they might make the playoffs. I haven't fit, done all of it yet. Uh, obviously, I'll let you know whenever I have all of that scheduled, and then I'll do a predictions video. A way too early playoff predictions. Um, moving on to, to the Colts. Uh, they got better at quarterback. They got worse on the O-line. They got better on defense in the secondary. Yeah. Week one of the Colts. I'm trying to speed this up. I'm sorry, because I always do this. Week one at, uh, at the Texans. Colts at the Texans. Uh, it's, it's a three and a W. Three and a W for the, for the Colts. And then we're moving on to week two. Uh, the Jags, it's, it's at the Jags, and that's a 3 and a W, but, you know, another toss-up, so they could be 0-2, and, and moving on to the next week is actually, a, it's at home against the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a 3, this is a 3, it's another toss-up, um, because I think the Colts are going to be very good at home, very good at home, I think the, de the defense is going to be enough to keep the, to slow down the Chiefs passing, the high-flying offense. But it's three, so it could be a toss up. Could it could so it could be so it's a toss up. So it could because it could be the Chiefs just you know going past them, and the Colts kind of getting there, but not not fast enough. Um, so the Colts, I have them at three 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 three. So it could, they could be zero and three, but I have them at three and zero. Yeah. Moving on, they are going to be at home against the Titans. I have that as a four and a win. This is a four and a win. Because, like I said, I think the, the Colts are going to be very good at home. Then week five is at the Broncos, and that's a, that's a three. That's a three, right? Three. That's why I'm back over here. It's a three. But it's at the Broncos, and I think, the, I think they're going to lose to the Broncos because I mean, the Broncos are very similar to the Colts. But there might be just, like, a tiny bit more, a bit, like, added bit from... I think the I think the Broncos have a better have, sorry have a more talented offense. I don't say better, but a more talented offense. It's a loss. Moving on to week six, it's a toss up. At, it's at home against the Jags. Hold on. Whatever. Yeah, it's at home against the Jags, and I have them losing that one. Does that make sense? No, it's the NFL. We're gonna move on. <laughs> They're on a cold streak now, I guess. Um, notice how I have them win winning at winning at the Jags and losing at home. I, doesn't make sense to what, what I just said. So you can fl pretend I flopped. I flipped those. Either way, same record. Um, and same score too. It's that's the funny thing. <laughs> uh, moving on to week seven or yeah, week, whatever. The seventh game of the, se of the season. It's the Titans, and they are going to be at the Titans, and it's a three and a loss. It's a three and a loss because I think the Titans are going to be like, oh, hey, we lost you already once. Let's not do that again. And, you know, the whole, like, uh, sweeping thing. I don't think the Colts are that much better than the, than the Titans are. I think they are better, but I don't know about that, that much better. Um, then next week is at home against the Commanders, and Matt Ryan does so well against the football team, the Redskins, like Washington. So I think the commanders won't have the success they want to have with Carson Wentz. And like, let's think about that. You think that you think that Carson Wentz is going to do well against his old, his free previous team, his most recent previous team? Come on, it's Carson Wentz. 
that's, that's, that's why it's a almost guaranteed dub, especially at home. Um, then moving on to the next week, it's at the Patriots, and that's a two and a loss, because Matt Ryan just struggles against the Patriots, and that's the cold facts. Um, the Patriots going to have a good defense. If they were at home, I think the Colts would win, though. But, but it's a two. Then next week is at the Raiders, and I give this one a three and a dub because I think the Raiders are going to be good against better like passing, better uh, offensive teams rather than better defensive teams. And I think the Colts are going to be a good, better defensive team with a fair offense, with a functioning, flowing offense. Um, as a Falcons fan, uh, I will miss Matt Ryan. I wish him nothing but success in Indianapolis. He deserves everything in the world three times over. Um, then next week is, is at home against the Eagles. Um, it starts the Pennsylvania stretch for the Colts and Matt Ryan. He historically does not do well against Pennsylvania teams, so I have them losing at home to the Eagles. Three and a loss. So it could, they could win, but I have them at three and a loss. And then next week I have them at, at a three and a W against the Steelers. So... Same, same kind of scenario. Then the week after that, I have them at the Cowboys, and that's a three and a W. Matt Ryan does well against the Cowboys. Then, I think by week is week 14. Uh, week 15, or the 15th game of the schedule, 14th, 14th game of the schedule, is the Vikings it's at Minnesota. Matt Ryan does well against Minnesota. Their secondary doesn't look, like, you know, super fierce. It looks better, but it doesn't look super fierce. Um... Another three, and then guess what? It's another three after that. It's at home against the Chargers. They th think they should be able to like compete, and they could win, and they could do enough. But like, I have faith in Justin Herbert, so that's a th that's a dub for the Chargers and a loss for the Colts. And then moving on to the last two games of the year, and that's at the Giants. Matt Ryan does well against the Giants, um, as long as it's not led by Tom Coughlin. Um, and. The Giants aren't going to be competing down the, down the stretch. No, they're going to be trying to, like, you know, get a good spot for Bryce Young or C.J. Shroud or Caleb Williams, maybe. Grayson McCall, who knows. Um, hopefully a quarterback. So they're going to, you know, be okay with losing this game. Especially to a good team that's going to be in, in the position to get make the playoffs, which is, which would be the Colts in this case. And then to finish off the year, it's another four. It's at home. It's against the Texans. Sure, like, the, the Texans are, like I said, they're going to be a compet competitive team. But down the stretch here, we, like, they've already beat, beat the Texans once this year, and that was to open the year. Oh, I just realized they open and close the year against the Texans. That's kind of funny. Um, the Texans won't be competing for a playoff spot at the end of the year. I'll tell you that. <clears throat> but the Colts will, so that's why the Titans, the Texans won't be trying that hard. I'm sure they can be like, oh, try to get them like out of out of the playoffs, but like they're kind of already there. So like they would only be affecting their seating. Um then so moving on to the Texans. Um oh sorry, I didn't tell you this, the, the predictions for this, this actual schedule. Um so I have the Colts with a fifty-five point and a 11 and 6 record. <clears throat> I'm going to be speeding up again because that's how I do it. Um, Texans, week one, Colts. It's a three and a loss. Week two at the Broncos. That's a two and a loss. Week three at the Bears. That's a three and a W. I don't think the Bears are going to be good this year. I really don't. It could be a toss up because it's at the Bears, but I think the Texans are gonna like be like, oh, we're not going, we're not going on three. Especially because the rest of their schedule doesn't look that easy. Um, week four at the Chargers, that's a two and a loss. Like it's the Chargers, they're gonna be good this year. They're especially against the team that's like got some. Uh, how do you say that? Um, it's got it's got time. It needs time. It needs, it's, it's a building team. Um, two and a loss. We, the week five at the Jags. The three and a loss. I think at the Jags are going to be enough to lose them, but they're probably going to beat them later in the year. So three and a loss. And then moving into week six, it's a two and a loss. It's a two and a loss. And week seven, it's a three and a dub. It's a three and a dub. 
moving back to week eight. It's the Eagles. It's at home against the Eagles, so I almost gave it a three, but I gave it a two. I gave it a two. I think the Eagles are going to travel well this time, but I gave it a two. You know, now I think about it, I kind of want to give it a three, but I'm going to stick with two because I already started making this trigger sound. So um, moving on to week nine. Let's go to two, two and a half, actually. But <laughs> week nine is at the Giants, and that's a three and a loss. Yeah, sure, like the Texans are the better team, but it's at the Giants, and the Giants aren't going to go winless, so... Texans are where I won the winnable games, so. Um, then they're at home against the Commanders, and guess what? It's another three and a dub, and then they're at the Dolphins, and guess what? It's a three and a loss. And then, guess guess who's back? Shady's back. Tell a friend, especially if they do masseuse work, um, because Deshaun Watson is going to be playing against the ten, the Houston Texans on in week 12. That is the first game he will be back. The NFL, of course, did that. I don't remember if I exactly said this out loud, but I said, all right, I'm, I, I remember talking to at least uh, is out here or to one of my people's friends. Um, so I, I remember thinking at least that they're probably going like, to give him 10 games because it's longer than the six that was suggested, and it's... Um, not the full season, but it's just in time for him to come back for a, a, to play against the Texans. However, they can't do an eleven game suspension because that's like that'd be weird. That'd be obvious. They can't like they can't do that. So of course the NFL did that. Um, it's an eleven game. There's, he's serving an eleven game suspension, not a ten game. It's the first time they've ever given an eleven game suspension. They never give odd numbers except for like three. It's like serving eleven is so specific. It's like they wanted him to come back against the Browns. Of course they did. Um, now the question is, which Deshaun Watson shows up? Is it the one that played in the preseason this past week? Or is it this Deshaun Watson from two years ago that, like, J.J. Watt apologized for wasting a year of his career? Yes, former All-Pro... All Defensive two-time, three-time? Multiple-time winning defensive player of the year. J.J. Watt said that to this quarterback. Um, I'm not optimistic for anything to do with Cleveland, especially the Browns, uh, especially after this. No, I, I will wish nothing but negative upon that organization for the rest of my time. However, I am thankful they exist because as a Falcons fan... I am thankful every day that the Browns exist because I get to stay a Falcons fan, which, like, sure, that might suck, but, like, I get to stay a Falcons fan. I, I would have had to change teams if I had to deal with the certain issue, but I don't. He's he's a Brown. Like, he deserves to be. So it's a four and a dub for the Texans, and we're 33 minutes into the video. Yeah. I suck. <laughs> well, I don't suck, but I suck at being fast talking about football. I ramble. Whoopsie doodles. Uh, week 13 is at the Cowboys. Remember earlier when I was talking about how the Texans and the Cowboys have, like, a rivalry because, you know, Texas and whatnot? Well, apply what I said there to here. Uh, it's a three and a loss for the Texans. It's, it's a toss-up. The Cowboys are a much better team, so the Cowboys should win this, but since it's a, like, a size kind of rivalry, and I feel like the, the Cowboys are going to, like, take the Texans kind of unseriously because of the record, then I think they're going to, they have a chance to do it, which is why they get a three. Um, so moving on to week 14, it's Chiefs. It's at home against the Chiefs. It's the Chiefs, though, so it's two. Uh, week 15 is at the Titans, and it's at the Titans, it's a 2 also. Well, i got to do multiple 2s. Um, multiple 2s. Uh, then we go on to Jags, and that's 3 and a dub. 3 and a dub. And we got one more game left, and that's at the Colts. That's a 2 and a loss. It's a 2 and a loss. So that finishes the year as 5-12 and 12 for the Texans, um, and that's 45 points for the team, but I will give them a gold star as well for um, I, for my prediction of beating of them beating the Browns on Deshaun Watson's return, so a gold star for them as well. 
Um, also, I like Davis Mills. I don't know if he's going to continue to make me like him, but I like him, and I kind of think that they're going to do well enough to not want to draft a quarterback, maybe? You know? They could tra- they could just trade back whenever... I'm thinking, too far, I'm way, thinking way too far ahead right now. I don't have time for that. Moving on to the Jaguars. Um, the Jaguars open the year at the Commanders, and that's going to be a win for them because I think their offense is going to be a little more successful than the Commanders, at least more high-flying. I don't know about how much, but a little bit. Um, it's a three and a dub. It's a toss-up. Moving on to the next game of the year, and that's, that's at the Colts. That's a, that's a three and a loss. Three and a loss. Moving on to the Chargers. That's a two and a loss. It's a two and a loss. It's, not, it's almost a one, but it's not. It's a two. It's a two. It's a two. And then moving on to the Eagles. At the Eagles, that's a three and a loss. I think the Jags kind of have an advantage in terms of, like, personnel on the Eagles. Because I think the Eagles are a good team. But if you feel like the Jags have, like, the, pe- the pieces in the right spots, that could take advantage of the Eagles, you know, pieces. Type Hypothetically. Um, moving on is to the, that's at home against the Texans, and that's a three and a W. And then moving on to uh, the Colts. That's the Colts. That's a two and a loss. Two and a loss. And then we're going at home against the Giants, and guess who's back? Not a good team, so it's a dub. But you know the Giants have to win some games in the year, so they could win this game. This game. That's why it's a three. Uh, then moving on to um, it's, no, it's another three. It's another three, and, but that's a loss to the Broncos. It's at home to the Broncos. And then moving on to week nine. It's oh, it's a game, another game at home to an AFC West team, which is the Raiders, but it's another three. And it's a W this time. Either of those could flop. But I feel like based on that like um, progression, that makes sense to me. Uh, then I have the... I have them going to the Chiefs, and that's a one. That's my first one of the whole time. They'd be the second one if uh, the Texans had to go to the Chiefs, but they don't. The Jags do, so that's one. I'm going to give a little bit extra one time because I haven't done any one time. Okay. And they're at home against the Jaguars. And if they are at the, if they are at the, the, um, the Ravens, this would be another um, one. But it's a two. It's a two. It's a two. Guess what's next? It's at the Lions, and it's a three. They are at the Lions, and it's a three and a loss. But, you know, it's a toss up, but I have them losing. I have them losing. And then we have uh, them at the Titans, and it's a two and a loss. Two and a loss. Tell you what, though, it's, a, it's their last two in the year. It's their last two in the year. That's phenomenal. Last two in the year. So now, then we get to week 14. Probably week 15, actually. Cowboys. They're at home against the Cowboys. I have it as a three. I have it as a three. Yeah, right? I have it as a toss-up. Because I think the Jaguars also have the pieces that line up against the Cowboys. The same way they do the Eagles. I could be wrong. But hey. You're this part of the video. Go to sleep. Um, they are next at the Jets. And I have that as a three and a W. Zach Wilson should be playing by that time. Um think the Jets are a better team, but I think the Jets probably won't be competing for a playoff spot down the stretch, if you know what I mean. Um, then they're at the Texans, and that's a three and a loss. And then, then they are going to finish out the year at home against the Titans, trying to stop Derrick Henry point the Titans are probably going to be trying to squeeze into the playoffs to trying to try trying to get to that six or seven um playoff spot based on what my schedule prediction I have for them they'd probably be a six or seven like I said I don't know the rest of the schedules that I have predicted for the rest of the teams but they'd probably be like a six or seven probably seven um the Jags aren't going to be doing that yet maybe next year um, maybe when they get a little, little bit more help on that O line and a little bit more help, I want to say in the secondary. To be honest, they're on the up so upswing, but like there's pieces to be built on. 
so that's why they're going to be losing this game. Because they're, they're not going to be trying to get the playoffs quite like the Titans will be. And, you know, just a little bit more motivation. They're sure the, the Jags did it to the Colts last year, but, like, the Colts are a little bit different than the Titans. The Titans are mo more well-run than the Colts, or at least historically. Um, so the Jaguars finished the year at 